The Minnesota Vikings had probably one of the craziest game against the Indianapolis Colts. Today, we're going to break down kind of what went wrong early on. We'll break down some positive plays as well that came from like the first half. Then we'll really get into the comeback. And at the end of this video, we'll get into some of the sacks, seven sacks the Vikings gave up but they also pass blocked 67 times. That being said, let's go ahead and jump right into this break. This first play right here, you have a pitch out to Dalvin Cook that hits for 40 yards. Now, technically the Vikings didn't score on this drive. They didn't even get a field goal. But what I wanna do is I wanna break down this play because the offensive line, in my opinion, does such a great job. Specifically, Christian Darius on the left guard. Ezra Cleveland both do a great job getting out in space and really opening up a massive lane for Cook. Let's go ahead and get into this play and really break it down. The first block right here by KJ Osborne really opens things up. The down block here by Thielen also is going to allow this play to work. Christian Derisel is going to pull out, get to the farthest cornerback. The center is going to reach on the two-eye technique defensive tackle. He has to cut him off. Left guard is going to get up to the linebacker, as is the right guard. This is a great job on the front side by KJ Osborne and Thielen. Nice block there. Nice block there. Of course, 72 gets up to the linebacker just to back that up. Left guard does a great job getting out of his stance. Right hand to help the center out. Center does a good enough job there where he's able to stop that defensive tackle. Cleveland does a good job on the linebacker. He sticks with them. The linebacker takes the outside gap. He's going to just push him that way. And of course, Christian Derisaw, man. What a nice block right there. Really, really, really nice job. Absolutely beautiful job on the front side by the offensive lineman. This right here is what a well-coached offensive line looks like. These type of plays. Absolute great job by the entire offensive line. With that being said, let's go ahead and get to the next rep. Now, of course, as we're kind of breaking down the game, I do want to get into the third and one and the fourth and one that came early in the first quarter in which the Vikings ended up turning the ball around. Now, first and foremost, I like the play design. I like giving it to CJ Ham because oftentimes when the fullback here goes into motion, he kind of comes down and then he'll end up hitting the furthest guy to the outside. And it's some sort of split zone concept. Now, in this instance, you get the defense off balance by actually handing him the football. And truth be told, the ball's at the 31-yard line. It's third and one. They need one yard. I think this was just a poorly placed football. In my opinion, this was a first down. Because Ham, nothing's down. There's no knee, no leg. Nothing is down. He's still knocked down, and he's reaching out with the football. In my opinion, the ball truly should have been at the 32-yard line. And this truly should have been a first down. I think the Vikings ended up getting screwed on this third and one play. But of course, as you guys know, this play didn't work. And then they went for it on fourth and one from the 31 yard line. I do think that was a bad mistake, especially early on. But regardless of how you feel about this play, I don't think this was a bad play design. In fact, the Raiders literally just ran this same play uh, just last week against the LA Rams. Literally the same exact play where you put Devontae Adams in the backfield. You put Josh Jacobs in at fullback. It was a third and one, same exact situation. And they handed it to Josh Jacobs the same exact way. And it didn't work for them either. Now for them, something else happened. Uh, but in this play, you can't really blame the O-line because of the fact that number 44 ended up just doing something you generally don't see. Pre-snap, he's going to end up going to the right. And as soon as the ball gets snapped, he's going to jump the inside gap. Now this generally does not happen right guys generally don't leave a gap and just end up jumping a different gap and in this instance zaire franklin ended up doing that uh, now here's one of the interesting things with this play if 44 pre-snap jumps this way the way he does and let's say the run was actually a run in this gap this play would have technically worked right and it would have been because franklin left his gap unfortunately franklin just happened to jump the one gap in which they were running the football and this play ends up getting stopped again bad decision early on but obviously they were still able to win with that being said let's go ahead and get to the next rep Alrighty, guys third and 11 right here this is early in the second quarter this was the play right before the fake punt uh, we're gonna break down both plays uh, first and foremost third and 11 you pick up 10 yards i do think it was a mistake trying to to do that fake punt I don't think it makes a lot of sense. Truth be told, you're in a bad spot already down 19 to 0. I think it would have made more sense just to punt the football, play some defense. Uh, but I do want to show you guys this play for you guys to watch Brian O'Neill. O'Neill does a great job with his second effort and anchoring down. Absolutely love it. Uh, Quiddy Pay does push him back a little bit, but in that second effort, he anchors down. I'm not sure if Pay hits him in the neck, but you can see his right hand gets right up top 
right into that chest area of O'Neal. Ultimately, that right there pushes him back. I'm not sure if he stumbles, if he loses his balance. His footwork looks a little off right there. The left foot ends up crossing with the right foot. But once he does readjust himself, look at him right here. Bam, makes contact and anchors. Look at those legs. This is exactly what you expect when a guy is going to anchor. You're going to drop those hips as well. That's a really, really nice job. Now, technically, O'Neal did give up two sacks, according to Pro Football Focus. I don't know if I agree with both sacks. We will break down all the sacks a little bit later on. But with that being said, let's get into the next play, which is the fourth and one fake punt pass to the gunner. Again, I don't know if I agree with this play right now. Now, it's a pretty nice, nice play. Truth be told, if the punter throws this and hits the guy right in the hands, this is a first down, right? Again, I, I like the play for sure in the aspect that it's a nicely designed play. Obviously, it doesn't work. And the decision part of it, I don't know if I agree with it, right? The pass is just a little too high. Again, the Vikings win, so I guess it really doesn't matter. But once again, I do think that at some point, just play a little bit more conservative. Alrighty, guys, at this point, the score is 31 to 0. Nine minutes left in the third quarter. This is when the Vikings really start clicking. Uh, I think, in my opinion, it really starts with this pass right here that goes for 63 yards to KJ Osborne. An absolute beautiful throw. Nice route. Honestly, this was just the, the, the perfect call. In my opinion, this was some sort of cover two or cover six. I believe it's cover six, which is basically a cover three at, on one side and a cover two on the other side. And basically, the way to attack this would be somewhere here in the middle of the field, depending on what this safety does. Or maybe you run a receiver at the top of your screen. Again, if the safety plays that, you throw it in the middle. If the safety plays this, you throw it to the outside. Or the second option would be an inside route here. Or right between the seams over that linebacker there, depending on what the linebacker, of course, does here. Of course, the Vikings are going to attack this right in the middle of the field. Osborne's wide open. But that too, I think the O-line does a pretty solid job, giving Kirk Cousins just enough time. I am positive, and, and keep in mind, I said this, if you guys watched me back in preseason, that Christian Derisaw is about to become one of the best left tackles in the league, and I'm very confident in that, and I was back then, and I'm very confident in it now. He pretty much shuts down anyone he goes up against. Yeah, he has a losing rep here or there, but for the most part, Christian Derisaw is going to be one of the best left tackles for the next 10 to 15 years. That is fact. Uh, you get plays like this where he's in a one-on-one -on -one situation with Yannick and Kakwe, and he just anchors so easily, so effortlessly. The guy just looks really, really, really good. And he's only going to get better, right? Year two, he's only going to get better. That being said, let's go and get to the next rep. So obviously, they scored a touchdown after that massive Osborne catch and run. Now they're going to come back on the next drive. And they're going to absolutely crush it and be able to get down the field with a lot of really, really nice plays. You got a 19-yard run right here by Dalvin Cook. Beautiful job by the offensive line. You know, I love Cook as a running back, but the offensive line is better, in my opinion, than Cook is. And it's crazy to say that because Cook is a top five running back. But the offensive line is also a top five, specifically in run blocking. It's a top five offensive line. Overall unit is probably a top seven unit. Regardless, it's still really, really good. And it's because of plays like this right just if you guys look at the right guard here at ingram and i know he's had his ups and downs specifically in pass protection sometimes in run blocking but for a rookie he's still a very solid football player it's because of plays like this he's going to double team here with the center the center's going to be able to flip his hips then he's going to get up to number 44 number 44 is one of the better linebackers in the nfl and it, ed ingram does a great job getting up to him hooking him to the inside that block right there really opens up that lane for cook to hit of course, you can also look at the right tackle. The right tackle does a good job sealing to the outside, inside zone to the left. It's exactly what you would expect out of him. Just seal his guy to the outside. The center obviously does a nice job of reaching. Really, really, really nice job. Left guard and left tackle also do a great job double teaming there. Left guard gets up to number 58, the linebacker. These are just a lot of really nice seal blocks. Like Cook basically goes untouched on this play. Up until he makes contact with 25, he does break his tackle and pick up another 7 or 8 yards. Let's get into the next rep. One of the things I absolutely love with Christian Derisaw is his ability to do things that are a little bit unique. When you watch him on this play, instead of getting straight vertical, he's going to close the gap between him and the defensive end. Prior to anchoring down, the first thing Derisaw does right out of his stance is he's going to take two steps to the left. He literally jumps out, one, two, and then he starts getting vertical. And that's unique because if you look at the right tackle here, 
The right tackle is going to just straight get vertical and start going backwards. Darisol takes two steps to his left prior to going vertical, and he does that to close the gap. These speed rushers want to get upfield. These speed rushers want to be quick out of their stance, explode, get after the quarterback. And Darisol knows exactly how to shut those type of things down. Beautiful job right there. With that being said, let's go ahead and get to the next rep. You got the 64-yard screen, the touchdown by Dalvin Cook. Beautiful job blocking by pretty much everybody. Uh, first and foremost, you guys back this up. Watch the two receivers here. They're going to basically block out. At the same time, the left tackle and the left guard are going to get out in space. And they're really just going to create a running lane, right? Basically, these screen passes are the same thing as a run in terms of the blocking. You get two receivers here who are basically going to block for Cook. The tackle guard get out here, pick up the linebacker. And that right there basically allows Cook that space. Now, of course, this is why Cook is one of those special running backs, top four to five back. Because when there's guys around, he'll make a guy miss. He'll change directions, cut right, cut left, and be able to do things like this out in space. This is an absolutely beautiful job by Dalvin Cook. And truth be told, he deserves pretty much 100% of the credit. The blocking's good, but the blocking only picked up about 20 yards, which is still a really good play. And really, it's Cook making plays after making contact vendor that allowed him to pick up those yards. That's a beautiful job by Dalvin Cook. Second and three in overtime, watch the double team by the right tackle and right guard specifically the right tackle and look at how he moves this defensive lineman and absolutely creates a nice lane for cook to pick up five yards it's a really nice shot at the point of attack even then you got 87 tj hawkinson coming on a wham block getting up to the safety and doing a great job crushing down that safety again allowing cook to pick up those yards keep in mind this is when games are won and lost right when you're in overtime the score is basically zero to zero it's a really, really nice job. Let's get into the next rep. Watch this play right here. Watch the offensive line absolutely keep the quarterback clean. And then look at the beautiful throw by Kirk Cousins right between the defenders. Absolute great job. The entire offensive line on this play is basically going to win. Look at Cleveland explode out of his stance. Look at that. Bam. Gets out of his stance super quickly. You can say maybe that's a false start. I'd say it's not. I think he just times it perfectly. When the quarterback says hut, as you can see, the quarterback saying right there, he's saying hut. Now you can see he kind of bends down a little bit for the football, which means the offensive lineman should be moving. And Cleveland gets out of his stance. Great job by all of those guys to really keep the quarterback clean. An even better throw right here, right between two guys. Look at that. Look at that throw right out of the reach of the defenders. This was one of the winning plays right here, right? 21 yards in overtime. 48 seconds left at this point. And of course, the final play was the 13-yard pass to Justin Jefferson that set up the field goal. Uh, great job by the offensive line to get out in space. I mean, look at Ed Ingram, man. Look at this play right here by the right guard. Right guard is going to get out in space, and he's going to run full speed, and he's going to take his shot. He sees that safety. He sees him. Bam! He puts his ass into the dirt. Those are the types of plays that I absolutely love, man. A great call in the perfect moment. Uh, let your guys get out in space. Nice block by O'Neal to block out. Um, you got all the other guys kind of coming. And Ed Ingram, man, he smashes the safety right there. That's a great job. Uh, I also do want to go over some of the sacks. So let's just jump into some of those plays. So technically, there were seven sacks this game. But there's a difference between actually attributing them to the offensive line. The first sack right here, you're going to see the right guard actually steps on Kirk Cousins' foot right there. You can see that left foot of his. And Cousins goes down, and technically this is a sack, but is it really? And then the second sack is going to be this play action. Generally speaking, when the quarterback rolls to the left, they're going to run some sort of concept to that side. And generally speaking, that is where you would throw the ball. But on this play, they're actually trying to get the tight end to slip, and they're trying to hit the tight end. And you can see as Kirk Cousins is rolling to his left, He's going to come back and he's going to look. He's going to angle his body. He wants to throw it to this tight end. Now, obviously, the defense shuts it down. And then the quarterback ends up getting sacked. So, again, is this on the offensive line? I don't know. I think the play design was meant to do something specific, right? It was meant to do a throwback to the opposite side of the field. And if that's not there, there's really no other option on this play. And, of course, the quarterback goes down on this play. Again, I would not put this on the offensive line again. But this third sack, I 100% will put on the left guard. He's going to get beat by arguably the second best defensive tackle, specifically in pass rushing, which is DeForest Buckner. 
Uh, he's going to punch him in the chest. Then he's going to spin right punch. You see that right hand come there. You're going to pin it with the left hand over the top. Nice job swimming. And that's a winning rep at this point, right? Once you have that leverage, once that effectively works, very hard to stop. And of course, Buckner jumps out and is able to grab on a Kirk Cousins. I would put that on the offensive lineman. The fourth sack is going to be Christian Derisaw to Yannick Ngakwe. I would also put this one on the offensive lineman. Yannick Ngakwe just does a great job right there. I do note this is a one, two, three step drop, which means the ball should theoretically be out quickly. Uh, if the ball's not out quickly, you're going to get sacked, right? Especially if you have to come back to the second side. If you guys watch the all 22 angle, uh, the quarterback is going to initially look to his right, which is to these guys down here, um, the quarterback should have thrown this ball. Uh, maybe the tight end was a little slow. Maybe the receiver didn't hit his break. And maybe Kirk didn't want to take that shot. Regardless, he's going to come back to his left. And sometimes that's not going to work out, especially if your offensive lineman loses quickly, as Darisaw does here. Uh, Yannick Ngakwe is known to use that cross shot. This is his go-to move. He's going to use his left hand right there. He's going to jump to the outside. And that's a cross chop because you're using your opposite hand, right? Uh, so it's a nice job by Unique and Kakwe. If you're able to effectively use the cross chop, generally speaking, you get the outside. And that's exactly what happens on this play. Derisaw is not able to make up and Unique gets one right there. Alrighty, so out of the four sacks so far, I would say two were on the offense lineman, two were not. This one, the fifth sack, I believe is also not on the offensive line, specifically because I think Kirk Cousins should have stepped up. Uh, there's definitely a lane for him to step up. This is a seven step drop, which means they are trying to take a deep shot. And if it's not open, what you're going to see, it's not going to be open. You're, you got two safeties. Unless you're going to take that 50 50 shot, you got to step up. You got to throw the football. Uh, and you see the quarterback goes down. Uh, again, you could say this is on the tight end here. You can say it's really just because of the play design, play concept. All right, there's different ways to look at these sacks. Um, Joe Burrow kind of talked about it recently. Not every sack is a bad sack right when you're trying to do some certain things also another thing to kind of keep in mind when you look at all of these sacks is the vikings threw the football 67 times this game and the defense knew it because they were up by 20 points at just this point right here they knew these are going to be true pass sets so they knew exactly what they could and could not do right uh, again it makes it very hard on the offensive line when you're down big because the defensive line knows a lot of these are going to be passing plays uh, on this play right here, you're going to see the defensive line game run with the left guard, left tackle by those two defenders. I think it's Yannick and Buckner. Buckner's going to go into Darisaw. Darisaw picks him up. Uh, Cleveland gets onto Yannick. Uh, and he actually technically picks him up too. Now, obviously, he does give him ground. But as a quarterback, sometimes you do got to step up, right? You got to avoid the pressure and then make that throw. And in this case, technically, he tries running and he gets tackled this is a sack but technically it goes for no gain all right so i don't know if you really count that as a sack it's a you don't lose anything you don't gain anything the quarterback's trying to run with the football at this point so i don't know if you're going to put this on the offensive line uh, maybe you credit them with the pressure but the final sack came in overtime you guys can check the play out it's a four yard loss once again they're trying to throw it deep uh, and you can see that Kirk cousins just isn't able to get the pass off seven step drop once again you gotta throw the football right step up right now throw the football um, if you don't feel comfortable which he obviously didn't he tried stepping into it and he ended up just getting caught once again uh, this is kind of what happens right one of the things with these seven step drops a lot of the time is you want guys to go upfield and you want to give your quarterback the lane to be able to step up and throw the football and on this play right here brian o'neill isn't able to hold his block long enough and that eventually allows Cousins to go down. Again, uh, seven total sacks. I would say maybe two or three were truly on the offensive line. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video, man. Thumbs up, subscribe, let me know what you guys think. And I'll see you guys next time with another video.